Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I am sharing with you three markers of success in weight loss. So these are the things that you need to look out for while you're on your weight loss journey. So welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. Over the past 20 years, I have developed a weight loss program where there are no pills, no potions, no diets to follow, no insane workouts, no massive cardio, nothing like that. With my background as a professional ballet dancer and teacher, a medical degree in physical therapy, personal trainer, and a health coach, I have boiled weight loss down to doing three things, fueling your body, moving your body, and managing your mind. And the biggest piece really is managing your mind. Like if you've heard my story, you know, since 2006 is when I started this business. I had uh, done some personal training and such beforehand, but when I started in 2006, you know, I did the meal planning for everybody. I told them, you know, these are the amount of calories you need to eat. And it was very dieters mentality. And the workouts were challenging. They were super challenging. Not that that's not a bad thing. Like you can do a workout and have it be challenging, but the mindset piece is the biggest piece to why I feel like women are not losing weight easily, effortlessly almost. And I have created this program all around that because now I'm on the other side. I used to do all that. I used to teach that. (laughs) I don't teach that anymore. And it works so much better. How many times have you said you're going to lose weight? You might have started, but then you realize that each year you are making the same declaration of losing weight. That's really frustrating, right? If you have done this, you are not alone. This is one of the most common things I hear when clients come to want to work with me. If you keep repeating the same goal and you're not getting anywhere, it's time to get help. Schedule your discovery call with me and let's get started on making new goals, not the same weight loss goal over and over. I teach my clients simple and doable ways to lose weight. As a client, you're going to learn how to eat whatever you want and still lose weight. I'm not lying with this. (laughs) You can eat whatever you want and still lose weight. You will also get a customized workout program designed by me just for you that fits into your schedule, fits into any injuries or illnesses that you have. It fits into your life, not the other way around. We're also going to figure out what is really holding you back from losing that weight and keeping it off. That's where the mindset piece really comes in. So I want you to imagine a year from now, you are down 40 pounds and you do not have to worry about your weight because you will know exactly how to keep it off for good, no matter what life throws at you. So if you're like, oh yeah, I want that, then schedule your discovery call today. Go to shapeitupfitness.com slash call. All right, so let's dive into today's topic. And what I want to do first is I want to first talk about what isn't the markers of success in weight loss. So guess what? The scale is not a marker of success. I know growing up in the eighties and nineties and seventies, we were told that the scale is what we really should be focused on. The scale is literally measuring your gravitational pull of your body on this earth. It does not take account for bone mass, muscle mass, body fat, food that's in your body, air that's in your body, nothing like that. Now, before you retort, but Nicole, the fancy scales tell me my water and my body fat. The only true accurate reading of body fat is an autopsy. The next best thing is a DEXA scan. If you are the average woman who just wants to feel great in your body and fit into your clothes you want to wear, you do not need all that detail. And I'm pretty sure you do not want to sign up for the autopsy version, right? The fancy scales. I get it. I have a fancy scale myself. The fancy scales. So for your body fat percentage, there is an inverse relationship between water and body fat for the readings. If your water take is super high, your body fat will show 
really low. If you are dehydrated, your body fat will read really high. There are so many factors involved in the scale. Like, did you just eat food? Did you go to the bathroom? What did you eat yesterday? Did you have salt or sugary foods? Is it that time of month? The scale can be used as a tool, but it does not give you a good representation of whether you are succeeding or not. Now, if you can step on the scale and not have it destroy your day or make today the best day ever because of a number that shows up, use your scale. But if it's affecting you, if it's determining whether you're having a good day or a bad day, that scale is not helping you. And for the plea, for, for the love of all that is good on this earth, please ignore BMI. I did a whole episode on BMI myths a while ago, which was probably in year one. I'll try and find that and link it in the show notes, but go back and listen to that one. BMI is simply your height versus your weight. If you did The Rock, right, Dwayne Johnson, if you did his BMI, he would be classified as overweight because the amount of muscle that man has on his body versus his height, even though he's tall, he would be classified as obese. A better measurement would be like waist to hip ratio, where you measure your waist and your hip and you there's a, a calculation that determines where you kind of are in that ratio. Or better yet, just look down. If you cannot see your feet, you are probably not at your healthiest right now. And I don't mean that sarcastically. There is no shame in looking down and not being able to see your feet. It's what are you going to do about it? You are a smart woman. If you look in the mirror and you're not happy with the body that you see looking back at you, you are not physically healthy, nor are you mentally healthy or as healthy as you could be, right? Because there's some of you out there who want to lose like five pounds um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I am not opposed to vanity pounds as they're called. I don't think there is any vanity pounds in the sense of like, when you look in the mirror, don't you want to feel confident? looking at the body that you have. And even if you're not there yet, know that you can get there. So I have a current client who has been really frustrated with the scale. It is not moving as fast as she would like. And she is not my first client to experience this or to have this frustration. But what I keep reminding her is that her inches have gone down significantly. And I hear her say, but Nicole, the scale. <laughs> no, but the scale. No. If you are fitting into smaller clothes, because that is what happens when your inches go down, right? Muscle takes up less space. So your circumference is smaller. And you are loving how your body looks and feels. You would not give a rat's patootie what the scale says. So. The first marker in success in weight loss is inches. Again, you know my tagline. I help women lose weight um, for the last time, right? I don't really like using the, the term weight loss because it really is body fat that you're decreasing. But this is how you guys come to me and you want to work with me. And this is how you describe the result that you want. So we're going with weight loss. <laughs> but. If your measurements are going down or those jeans that were super tight are fitting better, you are on the right track. So women who come to me want to look more, i um, using rabbit ears, more toned. They want some muscle definition, mainly in their arms. So when tank top and sundress season rolls around, they feel comfortable with sleeveless tops. You need to build muscle for that to happen. And you need to lose body fat for the muscle definition to show. So building muscle means that you are getting stronger. This is a beautiful thing. This will help offset osteoporosis among other aging circumstances. Having more strength equals independence as you age. You may not have to rely on others to help you do the normal things, right? Like opening jars, walking up steps, getting up and down out of chairs. 
So the client I mentioned before, part of the reason her inches are dropping, but not the scale weight, is because she is gaining muscle. She is getting stronger. She is able to do more, lift heavier things because of the program that I designed for her and her body type. Gaining strength is the second success marker for weight loss success. The last success marker is how you feel overall. I'm talking feel as in an emotional overall gauge. If you feel like losing weight is a burden or you have to force yourself or make yourself do it, you cringe when it's time to eat, you dread your workouts, or you feel like this weight loss process needs to be so incredibly hard because if it's not hard, you must be doing it wrong. These are all red flags and there are plenty more, but if your overall emotional gauge is I have to grind it out until I get it done, this is a huge sign that you will not have lasting weight loss. Now, if you love the overall process that you are taking, you savor the foods that you're eating. You take pleasure in moving your body because it feels good. You enjoy the person you're changing into. That is success. I've been on both sides, the hating myself skinny, annoyed when the scale doesn't tell me the number I wanna see, cringing at the bland food that I thought I needed to eat that I didn't really wanna eat, the hours I spent in the gym, pretty much hating the whole process. Except when you get that like little glimmer of thinking you're right on the right path, only to have to dig your heels in again to keep going. I promise you, it does not have to be like this. My clients unlearn so much when we work together. Weight loss can be simple and doable. You can love the process. I will leave you with this. If you do not like the person you are being when you're losing weight, you might lose the weight, but you will always gain the weight back. So if you've been listening to this podcast and any of my podcasts and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so incredibly good. Imagine what you would accomplish when you work with me, especially one-on-one. -on -one. Go to shapeitupfitness.com slash call and schedule your discovery call today and get started on a new way to lose weight, a way where you learn how to lose weight in three simple steps. And as you're dropping weight and or inches, you're learning exactly how to keep it off for good. Stop hating yourself as you lose weight. Go to shapeitupfitness.com slash call and let's check weight loss off your to-do list for good. Have a beautiful day and I will catch you on the next Shape It Up Over 40 podcast.